Let's see if we can get my slides up. Hi, everyone. This is a photo of my teddy bear, Iselin and I. It is taken on the day that we moved from Norway to Switzerland because I had just landed a job at CERN. In my suitcase, I had a bachelor's degree in comparative religion and half a master's degree in entrepreneurship. I was headed to the world's largest physics laboratory and I had no idea what to expect. I simply assumed that it would involve a lot of colliding particles and perhaps a Star Trek reference or two. I'm an entrepreneurship development officer. In short, that means that my job is to make these two types of people talk together. The tech Cernians who think code is poetry and the business guys in suits. I've been doing my job for about a year and a half now and amongst the things I've learned is that some people prefer Star Wars over Star Trek and CERN doesn't just accelerate particles. We accelerate innovation. Let me introduce you to CERN the European Organization for Nuclear Research, located on the Franco-Swiss border. It is the biggest physics laboratory in the world. More than 12,000 people have access to the premises. Surprisingly few of them, however, are physicists. We have computer scientists, engineers, HR personnel. We have our own fire brigade. Just like the slush community, just like any startup community, the CERN community comes with a variety of different backgrounds and with a rainbow of different passports. I want to give you a brief historical context. So, in the aftermath of the Second World War, the European science community was in ruins. One thing was the pure material damage, but in addition, they had suffered a major brain drain with most of the leading scientists fleeing to the US. That's why it was decided to establish a laboratory that could promote collaboration, knowledge exchange, collaboration going one step further. And since 1954, CERN has gathered brilliant minds from across the globe doing science for peace. The research mission of CERN is to find and seek answers to questions about the universe. And we do that by colliding particles and accelerators. You have probably heard of the crown jewel of our accelerator complex, our biggest toy, the Large Hydrogen Collider. It is the biggest machine in the whole wide world, and inside it, particles travel almost at the speed of light in temperatures lower than in outer space. There is nothing like the LHC in the world. As a matter of fact, there's nothing like CERN in the world, which is why we are dependent on innovation and creativity, our own innovation, our own creativity, and our own imagination in order to be able to do our jobs. No one gives us a toolbox and say, hey, go answer questions about the universe. We have to fill our toolbox ourselves. And we do that by innovating, especially within three areas of technology, accelerators, detectors and sensors, and computing. And often, what we do at CERN can be applied in society. This photo, I love this photo. It looks like it's pulled out of a 1970s sci-fi movie, and in a way, it's not that far from the truth. This picture is taken in one of the CERN control rooms in 1977, and at the fingertips of these gentlemen, you have the very first capacitive touchscreens manufactured and developed at CERN. The forerunner of the touchscreens that at least my neck and my thumbs know way too well today, and I'm guessing a lot of you feel the same. Then there's this guy. This guy is the mastermind behind a tool that enables my shopping habit, might have led some of you to your significant other, and it makes us able to communicate across the globe every day. In 1989, Sir Tim Berners-Lee wrote a paper that his CERN supervisor labeled as vague, but exciting. 
That paper turned out to be the very first steps towards what we today know as the World Wide Web. Some, including leading CERN scientists, said that there's no way this is going to work. But we know better, don't we? Today, this tool is an essential part of our everyday lives. Now, since the 1970s and the 80s, CERN has increased and formalized its knowledge transfer, and the mission of the knowledge transfer group is to maximize the impact of CERN in society. How can what we invent and what we create be applied in society at large? One of the answers to that question lies with people like you, entrepreneurs, inventors, investors, people who are just the right amount of crazy enough to be able to think outside the infamous box. Now, one of the ways we choose to support our startup companies is through a business incubation center network. Across Europe, we have nine incubators that specializes in supporting CERN spin-off companies, um, and they provide the startup companies with business support, financial aid, and access to internal and external network. CERN, on the other hand, gives access to the laboratory, preferential access to our technologies, and technical expertise. Now, it might sound a bit too good to be true, waltzing into CERN, taking a piece of Nobel-winning technology, sell it to the world. I wish it was that easy. That would make my job very simple. Luckily, we have some people who are brave enough to do it, and I want to walk you through five examples. A few years ago, the Austrian incubator visited CERN along with their incubatees. One of them was Neuschne. They do exactly that. They make new snow. They create a snow cloud that creates artificial snow, and when they visited CERN, they came across a monitoring, monitoring software that we use to monitor our accelerators and their environment. Now, they use that same monitoring software to make sure that their cloud is acting the way they want it to. And a few years ago, a group of Norwegian students visited CERN to do a feasibility study of a software, a, a library software that manages and preserves digital files. Their feasibility study uncovered a market potential that they wanted to exploit, so they went on to found the company Tint. Today, Tint has clients like ITU Berlin, Caltech, and the United Nations. Now, you know how you have to strain rice from water before you're able to eat it? Imagine you could do the same thing, separating water from bacteria, making wa clean water more accessible. That is what the British startup company Camstech do. They are making a biosensor using a CERN fabrication process that we use for our detector technologies. This is the accelerator tunnel of the LHC. It's 27 kilometers long. That's a lot of ground to cover, which is why we were looking for a flying inspection system. But we couldn't find what we needed, so we teamed up with a French startup company, Terabee. Together, through an R&D collaboration, we developed a high-performance, ultra um, precise measuring sensor, ideal for modern robotic applications such as drones. Now, my final example is from the Netherlands. Amsterdam Scientific Instruments use a CERN detector technology to make noise-free, high-resolution x-rays. They are able to uncover what nature somewhat had been able to keep for itself for a long time like through the zebrafish. So summing everything up, just like startup companies, fundamental research is dependent on innovation in order to move forward. In that space where entrepreneurs and scientists meet, in that space you can create such magic that the invisible can become visible. And that is why I want to encourage you Actually, scratch that. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to look to CERN for your next technology. I want to challenge you to look to CERN for your next venture, for your next solution to whatever problem you have. Because at CERN, 
we don't just accelerate particles, we accelerate innovation. Thank you.